What's up you guys? Ivy here. Welcome to a new episode of Production Diaries Podcast. What I'm about to demonstrate to you today is mixing of live set for Inner Sanctum, well-known metal band from India. If you're into death metal, I definitely recommend to visit their band camp and check out their latest album, Legions Awake. Chances are, you will find some nice tracks for your playlist. Before we'll start, I'd like to say that in this episode we won't have demonstration of final results, just because the full set is already up on Band's YouTube channel. So I'd recommend to watch that first in order to get full context of what we're about to do. The video itself turned out to be pretty sick, and I'm really proud to be part of something like this. So please pause this video, follow the link in pinned comment, and check that out. Let's start from source files overview. What we've got is pretty standard set of drum mix, vocals, and raw outputs of guitars and bass. In addition to that we've got camera audio track. This time we actually have some objectives. First, we should make it sound close to an album. This is fairly easy as the album itself contains isolated parts that can be used for matching, so we can simply steal the tones from there and have proper sound from scratch. Second objective is to maximize crowd ambience. This one is pretty tricky, as we don't have any sort of ambience microphones, so we'll have to use camera audio for that purpose. Last objective is to target for YouTube loudness levels, because this song will be posted there and there only. Current standard is minus 14 LUFS, so we'll have to keep that in mind. We're starting our mix from drums. Since we're targeting for album sounding, I decided to add the triggers for kick and snare, using drum tones that I shared with you in Production Diaries number 3. Basically I just used source audio to capture and program the hits, then passed it through those projects and got decent sounding stems. Honestly I didn't want to bother with processing of live tracks, so triggers will be main sources of sound, and original audio will only be used as a source of drum bleed. So first of all I balanced original kick and trigger like this. then rooted both to dedicated bus and applied minor tone corrections. Moving on to pack of snares. First thing I've noticed was noisy tail of phenomena trigger. We'll get rid of it with Saturn's transient shaper, and I'm only gonna apply this change to part of the spectrum where the noise is. Other band remains bypassed, so we only tighten up them highs by turning down the dynamics knob.
In addition I dropped those boxy mids around 500 hertz. Adding the snare room. I only cleaned up the spectrum just a bit to get rid of whistling around 1 kHz. Last trigger track already sounded pretty good, no need to process it anyhow. Now the live snare can be integrated. So here I just use the EQ to cut everything that stands out too much. Finally I rooted all the channels to dedicated bus and polished the spectrum one last time. Moving on to Tom's. First of all I trimmed the tracks to isolate the hits, that will make our track much more focused. We could get fast results with the gate, but I prefer manual work as it gives better control over the sound. All the tracks are processed in the same manner. First move is transient designer with boost of attack and reduced sustain. It will make the hits tight and focused. Second thing is partial reduction of mid-range boxiness. Tracks then go to dedicated bus where I scoop the entire group even more. Moving on to overheads. As you can hear we have ton of bleed from snare. In fact somehow it's louder than cymbals themselves. In order to put it down I use L2 with extreme amount of compression on both tracks. And then sidechain ducking with Pro C, driven by copy of original snare track. Both mix then go to dedicated bus, where I got rid of unwanted low end. <music> 
Second move is equalizing the loudness of cymbals with CLA 76. Last thing I wanted to change is mid-range bleed of the toms. It sounds too boxy if we compare it to direct channels. I couldn't fix it with EQ, as it would also change the sound of cymbals. So what I did was using C6 driven by output of Tom's bus. It will duck them dirty mids only when it comes to Tom's hits. Let's add a hi-hat. Here I use same snare killing combination of L2 and Pro C, all together with minor EQ to get focus on useful parts of spectrum. Now overheads and hat go to symbols bus for final processing. First of all I applied some stereo enhancing. And made the overall sum much more powerful by using Saturn with increased dynamics parameter. Our track is still pretty dry, especially for the live set, so let's fix it. First of all I sent Phenomena Snare to Reverb to get that nice and huge tail. Same reverb is used on inserts for toms and overheads buses. That doesn't give that much of effect though. Now last thing I added to the mix is this multiband compressor on master. It mostly reacts to snare spikes, so the overall effect is more or less transparent, just minor gluing on the track. So now it's time to steal some tones. It all started from going across the album to find isolated guitar parts. And after extraction of reference chunks, I reached out to guitarist and asked to record them for me. 
Then I simply used Revolver with preset from Metal Mixing Guide number 27, matched the tone with Isotope Ozone EQ, and converted it to Impulse Response. Just as always you'll find it in the additional files for this video. Second rhythm guitar is processed in exact same way. As you already noticed I separated original audio to chunks. The tracks will be processed in a different way to simulate changes of processing patches. Each one of them was pre-processed with denoiser for obvious reasons. Getting back to the processing, the lead track is pretty much the same as rhythm, we just use some space effects on top. Clean parts of first guitar were processed with one of Revolver's factory presets. Some space on top. and minor EQ correction. I've had some problems with getting the right tone for parts related to pink chunks. First one supposed to have that harmonic echo over it and I have nothing to simulate that kind of effect. Same goes for melancholic clean in the second part of the song, for some reason I just failed to get the right tone. Guitarist then said that he can process the audio with Axe FX, because he actually have patches that sounds very close to what they've had on album. So I've sent him the chunks and soon enough got the results. At this point I decided to leave it as is. Now it's time to print the audio and proceed with bass. Pretty much the same story with matching here. Find the reference part, use some distortion and match the tone. I don't really have much when it comes to bass reamping, so I couldn't emulate original saturation. And because of that tone correction alone didn't work as I wanted, just because tonal output of AB itself is so much different, I was managed to make it work properly with integrated frequency compressors, so all the stuff I don't want will be cancelled out. That's the point of using 4 units of Soothe. Each one works for a different part of spectrum. That alone gives us extremely close results.
Besides that I use the limiter to stabilize dynamics, which is pretty common practice for base processing. And my final move is small spectrum compensation. This particular zone was reduced by Sooth, and I didn't want it to happen. For obvious reasons post-equalization was the only way to get it back. And that's how it works. We can now print the track and put them stems into the mix. All the tracks are now added to the mix, and that's how it sounds after minor balancing and tiny bit of processing. For the most part I only process the tracks with same kind of reverb we used on drums, just to get that huge ambience feeling. Some tracks however required additional touches. Like filtering of clean guitar right here. I felt like it sounds little too dirty, all because we have bass and distorted guitars on top. And I also changed the tone of other clean part. It sounded kinda muddy and dark. On top I used some chorus to make it spooky. Now it's time to work on vocals. Main problem with it is extreme dynamic range. Fireball! Are you guys fucking ready? Oh, no, just a roll. Fireball! The reason behind this is unstable distance between vocalist and the mic. He do all kind of things with it. So even though the actual vocals may be physically stable all the time, it was the way of capturing itself that produced such a great level differences. I was managed to stabilize it with vocal writer, unlike the compressors, it won't have an impact on dynamics, just automatically operate with the level and attempts to keep it more or less constant, pretty much the same as fader automation would do. FIREBALL! ARE YOU GUYS FUCKING READY? No, just a row. The tragedy of mortals is the gift that leads to the foul. However, I didn't want it to react to the bleed. Not only it will lift up the unwanted stuff, it will also have an impact on starting point of vocal lines.
as the plugin actually attempts to perform smooth transitions. Since I didn't really want to bother with instrumental sidechain and all that stuff you supposed to do, I manually separated vocal lines from the bleed, and that will give us lots of options in the future. Anyways, let's get back to the processing. What I did on top was high pass filter to get rid of low end bleed and dirtiness, there's nothing useful here. Totally Terrorist severity as I've taken norms to this rock roll. No. Very minor reverb to smooth up transition jumps between two channels. Oh, well that's turned to hate. The reasons all the lies. The monster lies within. Awaken by the crowd to salvage you. Aside from processing accuracy, my point of separating the bleed was the fact that I could try to use it as a source of crowd ambience. What I did here is pretty extreme multiband compression in order to provide constant level of bleed and get rid of some weird stuff, like these pops. Honestly I've had no idea what was happening here until I saw the video. My second move was isolating part of the spectrum where most of the crowd sounds are. We basically give it some proper focus. Oh, the tragedy of my tales. The gift that leads to the foul. Of entities that defy Now All that's turned to hate This beast brings forth the demise Now both tracks go to Vocals Bus Where I use Cascade of Space Processing Modules First one is some sort of doubler, it will move the vocals from mono to stereo in a pretty natural way. Second thing is simple mono delay. And finally our old good reverb. Altogether it will make the vocals sound huge. Totally refuse it sounds so fate and so fate variants of taking on to this rock roll. No! Well, that's turned to hate The reason's all the lies The monster lies within Awakened by the crowd Fury of soul With a landless doubt Not lost, come to the soul Not just that Last two modules are related to integration with the mix. We use compressor to finalize the work of vocal writer, so the vocals can take proper place in the mix. And last EQ is to make it cut through the mix just enough, additionally getting rid of low end side information, we don't need it. I'm 
the soul so fade and so fade you The rest be variants of taking norms to this rock roll The only thing left is to get more sounds of a crowd from camera mic. You can see that I only left one side of original recording, all because it was too unbalanced from a mixing point of view. First of all I cut the stuff we don't need. Same as on vocals bleed it's gonna be lows and highs, leaving only useful mids where the crowd sounds are. Then I used doubler in order to recreate the stereo. Lots of reverb. Stereo enhancer to get good stereo spread. and some polishing together with reduction of low-end side information. Altogether it transforms the sound to something I would consider being far ambience recording. After the processing I went across the track and automated incoming level to maximize crowd sounds. I tried to push it even more, but in this case all the unstable bleeds started to interfere with the track in a negative way. What I'm trying to say is that I found the balance where there's as much crowd as possible without obvious dirtiness and phasing issues. Now last thing I'd wanted to talk about is Master Chain. Aside from multiband compressor I also use NLS bus for some warm saturation and gluing. Last thing is the limiter. The way I used it this time is kind of different. As you remember we're targeting for minus 14 LUFS, and the mix will actually be in that range if we use the limiter with zero gain. You probably wondering why did I go for plus 6 then? Well, one thing you should understand is that wider dynamic range doesn't automatically make your track better. In fact, if you make it too dynamic, you may find yourself in a situation when the track is not loud enough, yet already hits the zero decibels limit. Things might get even worse after multiple stages of data compression, as the byproduct of those will be peak level destabilization. That's why I'd recommend to have at least two decibels of peak headroom when it comes to YouTube videos, just to make sure that you won't catch clipping on any post-processing stages, from video encoding to YouTube data compression. On the other side, if you use super loud and highly compressed track, it will be normalized to more or less the same loudness level, that's what LUFS normalization does. In this case you won't get any benefits from loudness gain, but definitely get lots of unnecessary distortion and even more chances to get problems with true peak level after all the processing stages. To sum it all up, it'd recommend to target for about minus 12 LUFS when mixing and have a peak headroom of minus 2 decibels. 
At these levels of compression you won't get much noticeable clipping if push the track a little further. It's okay if YouTube will give you few decibels of normalization. One thing you should remember though is that it doesn't work other way. Even if your track is lower than their target standards and have lots of peak headroom, they won't make it louder. There is just no such a thing as positive normalization there, at least for now. Now back to my master. During all the auditions I used zero decibels output, while originally output level matched the input gain. I used different settings for a sake of filling this video as I didn't want it to be too quiet. Now if I use proper output, you'll hear that there was almost no level differences between active and bypass master chain. All because I used the limiter to get needed dynamic stability, some sort of gluing if you will. The monster lies within, awakened by the cross. So we have hell ton of headroom to prevent true peak issues, and just enough compression to make track stable enough. If you look at the original video normalization and statistics tab, you'll see that I got it just right. With all that being said, track is ready for final trimming and export. I'd wanted to show you little comparison with different version of this mix which I did to my taste without targeting for any loudness standards. Both versions are LUFS normalized. Now ask yourself, does it really sound much different? And before this video ends, I'd like to thank all the viewers and Patreon supporters, you make these kind of videos possible. In additional files for current episodes you'll get reamping projects for Cubase and Reaper, snapshot for Revolver 4 and pack of mix ready impulses. All of that together with all the other stuff that I've made throughout the years is available for just one dollar. You'll find the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.